Hey guys, the New York Giants have a quarterback. The New York Jets do not have a quarterback, and we don't know what the Ravens have. I don't know if the Ravens know what the Ravens have. It's all kinds of hysteria right now. And we are going to dive right in it like Uncle Scrooge into the money vault. Also, when you go to an NBA game, what is the most important asset or amenity that you want in your NBA arena? You might think you know what it is. I don't think you do, but I think there's a billionaire who just figured it out, and we're going to talk about it as part of what's hilarious today, because I think this guy really is a genius, and he makes me want to go to one of his games. All kinds of fun today. What is today? Wednesday? It's going to be a great Wednesday. Let's start with what I love, what I hate, and what's hilarious. I love that if you want Lamar Jackson on your team, you can go get him. Isn't that nuts? Go get him right now. This is not a fantasy. This is not fantasy football. This is not some sort of bizarre acid trip dream. If you want to have Lamar Jackson, 26 years old, as your franchise quarterback, go get him and bring your checkbook because he is available. Um, and it's exciting as hell. I'm not a Ravens fan. If I was one of them, I'd be pissed, I'd be scared, I'd be nervous, it'd be all of the above. You saw the news, the company came out, the Ravens didn't shock anybody by tagging Lamar Jackson, but they definitely surprised some people by doing the non-exclusive, which here's what this means. In lay terms, the Ravens just put their mansion on the market. That mansion they've been living in for these years, beautiful place, Incredible square footage, amenities, giant infinity pool, pool house, heated floors in the bathroom, giant basement, big old wall that's a fish tank. They put that on the market. See if anybody wants to come by. This is not a myth. Right now, if you're a team that needs a quarterback, go over and check out their house. Walk right in. You can walk in the front door, take off your shoes or put those little booties on or whatever, and just look around what Lamar's got going on. Sit down on the couch, open the cabinets, change the thermostat, look upstairs, whatever you want. Open up the DVR, use the restroom. The Ravens are letting you. The Ravens are encouraging you. The Ravens are almost daring you to come and look at their mansion that they built from the ground up that they just put on the market. Lamar Jackson is sitting on Zillow. <laughs> Go get him if you want. Do you want him? I don't know. And I don't know if the Ravens are going to let him go still because it's like the person who puts their mansion on the market and they kind of just want to see, they want to see like, wow, let's set the price at this. And are people really going to offer this? I don't know what the comps are. And actually I do that terrible house. The Browns bought down the street and paid a stupid price for that's kind of our comp. I guess it's Lamar's. It's this crazy world right now where anybody could go. Lamar's supposed to be an untouchable one-of-one one athlete who's not only one of the great quarterbacks in the league, he doesn't do it like anybody else. This isn't like Herbert and Burrow, who are both good in their own ways, but kind of do similar things. Lamar is Lamar. Lamar is, uh, you know, Michael Jordan and cleats when he's right and when he's out there. And they say, come look at him. Come get him. Everybody come on in. Open house. We're going to put flyers all around the house, our flyers all around the town. We're going to post one of those little things that says Lamar for sale, where you just take the little tag on the bottom and it's the phone number for the Ravens. Call them up. Call them up and come get them. It's surreal. It's very surreal that they did that. And I did the math. I went through the 32 NFL teams before the show started. And the teams that don't have a slam dunk quarterback, meaning either this quarterback is so good or so paid that we are definitely out on the quarterback market. Those teams that don't have that guy, I think there's 16 of them. I think it's precisely half the league. Half the league who does not have a forget about it, not in any way interested in changing our quarterback situation, situation. 16. And I even threw the Packers in on that. And I think I have to. 16 of those teams. How many... How many are going to go to that open house and check out Lamar and say, you know what, what's it going to take? Let's make an offer. Because I know teams were quick to say that they weren't doing it on Twitter, which might be BS, might be tasteless, might be both. How many of them? If your team doesn't have a quarterback, if your team just has an average quarterback or someone that maybe you're working on, that uh, maybe you'll, they'll become something, is not a team that's going to say, 
screw this. We love this kid. He's a hard worker, and maybe he'll turn out to be a player someday. Let's just spend everything we got and get Lamar Jackson and start selling jerseys and start catering the offense around him, and we'll see you in September because we got Lamar and you don't. I'm very skeptical about how many teams are going to do that because not only do you have to spend all the money, you have to jump into the same bleep show negotiation that the Ravens have been doing for over a year and have come up with bupkis. They couldn't land the plane. So either Lamar's wants are out, completely outrageous or the Ravens are cheap and they don't want to pay their quarterback the going rate. Which sounds more likely to you? I actually think it's what Lamar wants the world. Fine. Then you got now not one team. You have, in my opinion, 16 teams who can line up and pay you the world. I just, I can't wait. Isn't it going to be nuts if some team comes out of nowhere that we never expected and Ian Rappaport comes out, breaking news, Adam Schefter says, the so-and-sos have reached a deal that made an offer to Lamar Jackson. Now the Ravens have a chance to match it and it's 300 million or something crazy. It might happen. It might happen before the end of the show today because the Ravens did not shut the door. They did not say this is our guy. They did not say no one's touching him. They said, touch him, try him. Might as well put your jersey on him and some pads and run him around because we're letting him out there. It's exciting as hell. If I am a Ravens fan, I am so upset that this happened because I got a Lamar jersey and my kids got a Lamar jersey. And Lamar means something to this team and this town and this identity and the state crest of Maryland and the purple and the crab cakes and everything. He means something. He really does. Outside of Ray and Ed, it's Lamar. That's the guy. And you know, the next day, next thing we know, he might be a Carolina Panther. Gone. Poof. Just like that. It's, it's intoxicating as hell as a sports fan, someone who does this all day. Man, it is scary. If you're going to the Lamar open house, let me know. Put on those booties, take some pictures. You're not supposed to take pictures. Do it anyway. Everybody does. I want to know who's going to land this thing. Lamar is on the market, my friends, and I love it. It's exciting. Let's get to what I hate, though. That was a big day yesterday, especially for the Giants, New York Giants here. It's my local team. Most of the people in the town where I live are Giants fans, Giants mania. People are talking about the Giants in the grocery store because yesterday had a huge day. Do they keep Daniel Jones? Do they keep Saquon? Yeah, they keep them both. They tag Saquon. They give Daniel Jones an extended deal that I heard came down six minutes before the deadline. You know what I hate about it? I just hate how I feel about the Daniel Jones deal. Because I'm conflicted, and I'm murky, and I'm moody, and I do not have this super strong, one way or another leaning like you're supposed to in the hot take sports media game. This is an embarrassment, this contract. This is ridiculous. Or the Giants are going to win the Super Bowl with Daniel Jones. I think it's complicated. I do. I think the human reaction to this story is one where you don't really know what to make of it yet. And I'll tell you why. There's things about this that make me uncomfortable, the Daniel Jones deal. And there's things that I like. Here's the things that make me uncomfortable. Daniel Jones is making $40 million? Daniel Jones? Seems like a nice guy. He's a hard worker. What are we doing? I know the system dictates and saved me all the preaching about the comps. I, I know that. Just stop for a second and look in a vacuum. The Daniel Jones, who is average at his job makes 40 million bucks and that's just to say the nfl say the position just something uncomfortable about it and then you start to get into what what has he done he had one good season he threw 15 touchdowns in that season in the year 2023 where touchdowns are falling out of the sky they did not give him the 50-year extension a ways back they did not believe in his future um, he had one good year and he had one really good playoff game where he looked like bleeping Randall Cunningham against the, the Vikings. And I think that's why he has this. It makes me uncomfortable. I have $40 million sticker shock. You know, Daniel Jones, if you look at the quarterback's average money per year, there's 32 starters. You know where he is? Seventh. 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 Daniel Jones. If you were to rank the quarterbacks one through 32, I've done this before. Where do you have Daniel Jones? 20? I, I, it, it's, it's certainly not in the top 15. There's too many good guys. Is he 22? I, I don't even know. I don't think he's in the teens. I think 20 is as high as you could possibly go with Daniel Jones at this point. And it's the 40 million bucks. It's a potential to earn more. And just most importantly, never mind the money, 
he's the face of the Giants. He's staying. He's competing. What else makes you uncomfortable? I don't know that he was completely outclassed by the Eagles in the playoffs. Just dusted that he lost to them three times last year and looked like he didn't belong in the playoff game and that he has to play them at least twice every year. Okay? That makes me uncomfortable. I would have liked to see a little more in that game. Lights looked really bright. I know the Eagles were good. Eagles beat almost everybody they played. They beat the Giants three times. What makes me comfortable? Brian Dable. Brian Dable is... Here's the deal. Brian Dable came and changed the whole organization in about five seconds. Brian Dable did not draft Daniel Jones. We see this all the time. The head coach comes in, especially an offensive-minded one, and, you know, when he comes in, there's already a starting quarterback, and he says, oh, this is great, and I'm going to rave about him. Of course. Why not? I'm trying to get the Giants job. I just got the Giants job. I'm going to say this quarterback's excellent. It's not the guy. They didn't draft pick him. They didn't covet him. They, he was the guy who was there. We've seen it a million times. We may be seeing it right now with what the Bears are doing in Justin Fields. We saw it prior to that with Mitch Trubisky. And we can go down a million holes with coaches who show up and have a quarterback who's already there waiting for him. And that's what the Giants just did. But Brian Dable said, I don't care. I like him. I like him. I just want some games with him. I just want a playoff game with him. Pay him. Pay him. I like that. If you're around Dable for five seconds, and I have been, he is awesome. Man, he has a ball of energy. He's gregarious. It's kind of physical. It pulls you in. What's up, man? He's awesome. So if he likes it, that makes me more comfortable. You know what else makes me more comfortable? I mentioned the season that Daniel Jones had last year that was good. 15 touchdowns. He had zero receivers. Zero. The, the Kenny Galladay thing is farce. It's Slayton gets hurt. There's a couple other guys making some plays for him. But he got through and he did what he did. And they'll get him more help than that. My God, that was terrible. That makes me comfortable. And again... He looked like Randall Cunningham in the playoff game, which also makes me comfortable. But guys, if, if you're on the, 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 the scale right here with the blind justice, with the blindfold, and was this right? Was this proper? There's a lot of things that make me uncomfortable. Some that make me comfortable, but I think the biggest, most uncomfortable factor is like, do we know for sure that he's going to play well? That he's going to get better? That he's going to grow? Do we know that? It's a little bit of a risk. And that Daniel Jones is just the guy who runs around pretty well and keeps his mouth shut and is likable enough and makes some plays, but he's just never going to be great. He's never even going to be what Eli was in his prime, which was a really good starter that wasn't one of the best guys in the league. That makes me uncomfortable because he just got 40 million bucks a year. 40. And I know it's going to be 60 and 70 and 80 for some of these guys in the next hour, probably. Don't care. Giants fans, you can't tell me you're absolutely fist pumping and saying hell yes, but you also can't tell me you're crying and saying, what are we doing? It's uncomfortable. I don't like how I feel about Daniel Jones, but I like Brian Dable. Maybe he'll make me feel better. I hate feeling uncomfortable. I'm usually comfortable talking to you guys. I like being here in the spot. You know what else I like doing? Talk about what's hilarious. Come on. Steve Ballmer, owner of the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, this is great. You know anything about Balmer, you probably do. Microsoft background. You know what? Let's just bring it up now. <laughs> By federal law, when you say Steve Balmer's name, you have to run a certain piece of a video. Just bring it. Go ahead. And uh, it, it's kind of <laughs> what comes with them. You know how when Alfonso Ribeiro was around and you see him, you're like, oh, you got to do the Carlton dance. Where's the Steve Balmer dance? This is when you say Steve Balmer. <laughs> You gotta go with him just power clapping and doing like the the, the mashed potato, whatever that is. It's, it's one of the most awkward stage presentations in history. It's one of the whitest things in history. One of the richest things in history. Him and Billy Gates and a bunch of other guys who I don't know. It's kind of like, I know <laughs> Jalen Rose and Chris Webber and Juwan Howard. The other guys I don't recognize as much. Well... This is Steve Ballmer. This is his proper introduction. What's up, Bill? How you doing, Bill? Bill Gates, up there, just clapping along to Rolling Stones, start me up. So that guy, Steve Ballmer, has started up something else, all right? So if you don't know this, the Clippers, for years and years and years, have shared their stadium with the Lakers, and it's called Crypto something now, but for years, especially when I lived in L.A. and the Kobe era and Shaq era Staples Center. So they're building a new stadium that's going to be just for the Clippers, and it's right around where the Rams and Chargers Stadium is, near the airport and the Randy's Donuts in Los Angeles. So 
we're in this this golden era of new stadiums where whatever football stadium, basketball stadium, baseball stadium you open, it's all about the the wow factor. What are you going to tell the fans? What are you going to put on Instagram? You can't just put your field and your seats and your hot dogs and call it a stadium. You got to like change the game. You got to do crazy things. I remember I went to one of the first games ever played at Levi Stadium where the 49ers were. And this is like eight years ago. And you could pull up the app, which was cool at the time. There's a stadium app. And you could order booze to your seat. And they would bring it to your seat. And we were in San Francisco, so we like ordered wine. And they brought it to our seat. And I felt like we were on Star Trek. I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever done. I just put this thing in my phone and you brought me Pinot? Yes. They added the wow factor. So Balmer are going to open the new Clipper Stadium, especially in Los Angeles. you got to do something good because you got to court the celebrities and numerous Kardashians, all that. So what do you do? You do it with booze, you do it with music, you do it with screens. It's kind of all been done. Steve Ballmer has changed the arena bathroom game. Have you heard about this? I think this is so smart. So he talked about this. This is the owner of the Clippers, about one of the things in this whole giant multi-billion dollar deal to house the Clippers for decades to come. Steve, this is a great thing you're doing. What are you most excited about in this new endeavor? Toilets! 1160 toilets and urinals! Three times the NBA average number of toilets and urinals! We do not want people waiting in line. We want them to get back to their damn seats uh, at the end of the half before the game. Clocks! That's great. Toilets. That's a man in a hard hat worth uh, however many billion going, Toilets! Toilets! And I feel him. I think we all do. Understand, he just spits stats at you. And here are the facts. You're going to a Clippers game once they build this place. Here are the stats. It has 1,160 toilets and urinals combined. And that is three times the NBA average. Here's what gets me. You think about how many people could be in that place. Halftime of a playoff game, or more likely for the Clippers, a regular season game. Um, 27 to 1 fan to toilet ratio means there can't be more than 27 people if you spread them out mathematically to each toilet. That's unbelievable. I have been to cathedrals, be it Wrigley, Fenway, Yankee Stadium, Lambeau, where 27, I, I, I've seen 200 people in line for one bathroom. Is there a bigger kill at an arena, a sporting event of any kind than that bathroom line? Concession line, I get it. Concession prices, I get it. But those are optional. When you have to go to the restroom at the game, it, sometimes it could take a half an hour. And I, listen, I speak from a place of privilege. I'm going to the men's bathroom. That line is just the, is about this compared to the women's line. If I'm with my wife, you're just like, oh my God, honey, I'm not gonna see you until the fourth quarter. And it's the second quarter. The line goes down three different mezzanines just to get into the poor women's bathroom. So it's so smart because I think any billionaire who wants to be flashy could say, we're going to have the biggest screen ever, or we're going to have this incredible sound system or this custom court. Like when they built Barclays, there was all this talk about the court was going to be a different design, a different grain of wood. And oh my God, Jay-Z is so cool. I don't give a damn what kind of grain of wood the court is. Can I go to the bathroom in under 56 minutes to get back to the game? At this place, you can. I think it is excellent. It's an excellent idea because, I mean, do you not have a memory of waiting in a line that long? And like, what do you do? Do you wear a diaper to the game to avoid it? No. If you think the concession lines are too long, oh, well, you don't get concessions. You just watch the game. If you think concessions are too expensive, then don't buy them or eat before you go or eat after. You have to go to the restroom and it's so smart. And I feel like uh, the Atlanta Falcons sort of walked so the Clippers could run. Because when they opened their new stadium a handful of years ago, their thing was wider seats, which is smart. I like it. And it probably cost them capacity. They don't care. They want people to be comfortable. And they vowed to have cheaper concessions, which I think, I think they still do. But I know when they opened, they would take, if it was, you know, a, a Pepsi was seven bucks at a normal place, they would call 450 or something. And that was great. This is better.
This is honestly better. If I was to ask, like if I'm gonna go to, especially this time of year, let's say that this place where the Clippers play, let's say they host uh, NCAA tournament games. Okay, so you ever go to one of those things? You can be there for hours. You can be there like all day watching games or get different tournament things come on one after another. The bathroom is a huge part of your experience. It just is. There's so many damn people. The bathrooms are hell on earth. The lines are terrible. The people are terrible. The conversation in there is terrible. And they try. And they try to put the audio from the radio call of the game going on. Or maybe even there's even a TV monitor of watching the game. But that just makes me know that I'm missing the game. And I'm an idiot who could be watching this same TV on my couch for free. But I paid all this money to go to such and such basketball game. And I'm spending it in the bathroom because I had two $12 beers and I have to sit there in this line. I love you, Steve Ballmer. It's like, it, there's something about knowing people and sure everybody loves alcohol and food and all that. They love comfort. That's what people like. They like customer service and comfort. And it seems, well, who cares? They have a lot of bathrooms. What kind of booze do you have? They'll have all the booze too, trust me. But they'll also have a way for you disposing it and you don't miss the second and the third quarter. I love it. We've talked a lot about stadiums, ballparks recently. Peyton Manning's doing that show where he's ranking the top 10 stadiums of all time and he's got the, the Roman Coliseum as number one. Can you imagine the hell on earth it probably was to go to the bathroom in the Roman Coliseum? What do they have, just ditches dug or something like that? Or you would just go in your skirt or whatever the hell you were wearing? I don't know what it was, but we've come a long way since then. Peyton needs to adjust the, up the rankings on his show because I gotta tell you, this is my favorite stadium. I don't even know what it's called. The spot, you know what, they should have their sponsorship be some sort of like plumbing company or some of the bounty, you know, something like Snuggle. No, Snuggle's fabric softener. I'm thinking of toilet paper brands, whatever it may be. That should be the Clippers. The Clippers, they own Los Angeles now. Enough, enough. The Lakers have had their run. Their arena is named after crypto and theirs has new toilets. You can go anytime you want. I'm in. I'm in. I love the Clippers. I love them. Uh, let's get into, oh, into a dome. That's what it's called. All right, there's a lot of ways to take into it and like make a play on words. We'll get to it. But in the meantime, this is my second favorite thing about Steve Ballmer now after he did the dance. Let's get to my favorite thing about the show. It's always called Brant Awareness where Michael Flynn makes us aware of headlines that I, Kyle Brant, may not have been aware of. Maybe he has some more about arena toilets. Let's get into it. That's the best kind of notification. It's the sound of another sale on Shopify and the moment another business dream becomes a reality. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're selling helmets or cleats, Shopify simplifies selling online and in person so you can focus on successfully growing your business. Shopify covers every sales channel from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform. It even lets you sell across social media marketplaces like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. No matter how big you want to grow, Shopify is there to empower you with the confidence and control to take your business to the next level. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash brand, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash brand to take your business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash brand. There he is. Am I wrong about the, the, the 27 to one fan to toilet thing, Flynn? Tell me I am. No, you're not wrong at all. It's great to see an owner who understands that yep. that's something that fans really want. And in researching this topic, if you go back years ago, two, three years, when the new arena was just announced, like he said, he, like first line, we're going to build a new arena. Second line, we got to get better bathrooms in there. Like fans have to get to their seats quicker. Uh, he, he just seems to understand it. If, I, if I'm a fan, I want that guy owning my team. And it's interesting because as a billionaire, like I, I don't imagine you're waiting in a lot of lines to go to the bathroom. When's the last time? Unless he does that thing where he's like man of the people and he goes out and waits in the line with the rest of them, which I doubt. But like when is the last time he's waited in the worst lines in the world, which are like airport security, uh, amusement park, bathroom at stadium. He, he doesn't wait in those lines, yet he still knows and he gives the people what they want. It's great. 
Yeah, if there's any guy who's, if there's any owner who is a man of the people, it's him. There was another video I'd love to play, but we can't play the music, where I think it's the same exact Windows 95 conference, which the 90s were insane. Uh, but when he gets onto the stage for the first time, he runs on to uh, get on your feet and is just like hyping the crowd up, clapping. Like, it's it's amazing. He's a cat. Really? I mean, listen, yep. if we were... If you want a more painful <laughs> '90s video, I don't know if it's more, because at least this the, the Microsoft thing is like very happy. It's contagious. Look up um, <laughs> the '92 Democratic National Convention. I think I have it right. I think Bill and Hillary are doing the Macarena. It's rough. Uh, it's really sounds bad. right. Yep. <laughs> I think Hillary is up there doing this, and it was hot at the time. And I think they had like maybe Los Del Rio was there even playing it. It's it's rough. If you put those two in some sort of octagon, it would it would be bloody. Yeah, uh, 90s, man. Uh, let's get into the headlines. Uh, right. Earlier this week, Rich Eisen said that the number one rumor he was hearing at the Combine was that Tom Brady might not be done. And to keep a close eye on Miami, well, Brady's a social media star now, retweeted it with, quote, anyone who thinks I have time to come back to the NFL has never adopted a two-month-old kitten for their daughter, end quote. Kyle, two-part question. What will it take mm. for people to believe Brady is officially not coming back? And your thoughts on kittens? Um, first of all, let me tip the cap to Rich Eisen, who <laughs> did a, a magical bit of content. He really did. He just came back and he has top five rumors that he heard, not reporting them, he's not saying they're fact, but God, he just titillated everybody. Really good job by Rich. Uh, my, you know, my thoughts on this is this is a soft denial. It's, it's, in fact, it's not a denial at all. It's a smart ass little comment. That someone on Brady's social media staff, I mean that Tom Brady tweeted, uh, and it's fun, and he's being the dad, and he's getting a kitten. It's not a denial. So, I mean, it's it, it feeds the fire. What will it take for everyone to realize that Tom Brady is, is not coming back? I don't know, death? And then probably still not. It'll be like Elvis and Tupac. <laughs> there, there isn't one. It's... I, I feel like even a few years after Favre played his last season, like, they're still like, hey... Brett, get that old Winchester warmed up. We could use you. And it helps that Tom Brady's just always in such good shape. It's death. And I hope it doesn't happen for a long time. But Tom Brady's death will be what causes people to stop thinking he's coming back. Kittens. Uh, I didn't grow up a cat person. But very quickly. And I, was, I would say I was tentatively sort of anti-cat. Just not interested. And then um, when I was uh, living in a Hollywood apartment uh, in 2004, I had my roommate, a guy named Adam Green, great guy. One day he just decided upon himself he was going to bring two cats home, two baby kittens. He's like, I got two cats. I'm like, what? <laughs> I live here. And I love those cats. And their names were Tyler and Perry, named after Steven Tyler and Joe Perry from Aerosmith. He was a big Aerosmith fan. Aerosmith was huge in 2002. And I learned to love the cats. And so now I, I, I will never own a cat unless my children really like want to murder for one. But if I'm around a cat, I'm like, oh, a cat's here. I've come a long way. I've come to respect cats. You? Uh, I'm allergic to cats, so not a huge <laughs> cat guy. Insane, <laughs> insane that uh, two cats named Tyler and Perry and no connection to Tyler Perry at all. Isn't that funny? No one knew who he was back then, I don't think. 2002, was Perry around yet? I'm not even sure. Uh, not in the public eye, I don't think so. Uh, moving on. You've mentioned the big five quarterbacks you're waiting on this offseason. Somebody we haven't spoken about in a while is Baker yeah. Mayfield. According to Jordan Schultz, the Rams are interested in bringing him back, but the Buccaneers and 49ers are interested as well. Kyle, another two-parter. Do you think Baker is a starting quarterback next season? And if he is, are you still aboard the Baker hype train? I can't quit him. I can't, I can't quit him. I've said it before. I like Baker Mayfield in spite of myself. I know it's not smart. I know that it probably won't go well to put that out there. But listen, I'm not saying he's going to win five Super Bowls. I'm saying that I like him. I like the way he handles his business. I think he's cool. Um, top to bottom. I like his arm strength. I like his accuracy. I like the way he handles the media most of the time. Uh, I like his commercials. I, I like him. I root for him. Is he still a starting quarterback? Maybe. <laughs> I, I'm hearing the rumors that you are that, that he's going to go to Tampa um, it's interesting to see this will be his third shot so the Browns thing the Carolina thing just fizzled very quickly and then this like the this quick side project with the Rams that wasn't a real thing and now what if he starts week one again 
that's it, right? You have to make that work. Um, I do think he can still be a starter. If only, listen, if only because he was with Ram for 26 minutes, showed up on a nationally televised game, chucked the ball around for a big win, you know, against a, a team that's, the Raiders team, they were fine last year. They were all right. Their defense was terrible. I don't care if it's against a high school team. Baker Mayville in that moment's like, I still got it. I got it. I'm a number one damn pick, number one overall. So yes, I think Baker probably still can start. And I hope he does. And I have not, in the, I, I'm not, have I gotten off the Baker train? I'm driving it still. So yes, <laughs> I hope Baker lands somewhere. You know what? I, <laughs> I hope the Packers get rid of Aaron Rodgers and Baker Mayfield starts for the Packers. It starts anywhere. I'm in, Flynn. I always will be. Yeah, we've talked about in the past. I'm not as big on Baker Mayfield as I'm, you are, but he, he definitely, I would say, is one of the maybe top 32 quarterbacks left. Uh, the 49ers being linked is interesting. Once we get past all these offseason moves, we still have to start really talking about what the 49ers look like next season. Yeah. And remember, when we were talking about where Baker was going to sign out after he was cut by Carolina, uh, we found that Kyle Shanahan quote saying he'd always been a fan of Baker Mayfield. Mm. Uh, so so get your Baker Mayfield talk ready. It's uh, going to come up later in the offseason. Good. And I want you to know, Flynn, I like that you don't like him. And I don't want you to start liking him. I like things that I want people to not like. I, I, I drink gin martinis. People think it's disgusting. I like gin martinis. I like Baker Mayfield. And part of the reason I like those things is because not a lot of people like them. So they're my band. If they have a big song that blows up, you can listen to it. But don't say you were an OG fan. All right. You understand that? I understand that. I like that Good. about you. Uh, finally, you. when it was reported yesterday that the Jets brass were on their way to California to meet Aaron Rodgers, some of the younger Jets took to Twitter, running back Brees Hall tweeting, don't mind me, just manifesting. Yeah, and bet. defensive rookie of the year, Sauce Gardner, said, hey, Aaron Rodgers, I promise if you become a Jet, I won't pick you off in practice and I'll burn the cheese head. And quote, Kyle, I thought you asked a great follow up of Aaron Jones this morning on whether he thinks he'll actually, he will actually reach out to Rodgers personally yeah. what do you make of the entire situation today i think the jets want him bad and i think the players and the owners and the coaches and everybody do i found myself in a situation this morning that you're alluding to where i was sitting on live tv and to my left was aaron Rodgers' running back aaron jones and on the monitor to my right was his potential starting tent tight end cj uzama of the jets so we were in a conversation with both of them as the Jets are sitting, presumably, like at Roger's breakfast table talking about him joining the Jets. And we were like, guys, what do you think? And I asked CJ, I'm like, to basically, like, what, make your pitch. As Aaron Jones is standing right here, you know, looking at maybe 6 and 11 next year without Rogers. CJ, make your pitch. And CJ doesn't blink. He's like, well... We have the offensive rookie of the year. We have the, uh, the defensive rookie of the year. We could have had two offensive rookie of the years with Brees Hall, who was well on his way. And it's like, oh, damn. Yeah. Yep. 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 That makes sense. That makes sense. And then you go to Aaron Jones and Aaron's just trying to play the hits. He's just saying, you know, Pat Packer for life, legend. And it was like, it wasn't that tangible of an argument from Aaron. But Aaron Jones, Showtime, number 33, he's just like such a nice guy. He's very, he's agreeable. He's not looking to make conflicts. Um, but I did ask him that question, like, Aaron, we're kind of giggling about this. This is, this is real, dude. The Jets may sign him today. They may, they may get traded today. Don't you think you should text him? And it, it, it opens up a bunch of questions about, like, what, what are Rodgers' teammates' relationships like with him? I don't know. I, I don't know who he texts with, if he's friends with him. I didn't get a vibe that Aaron Jones and Aaron Rodgers are in communication much at all, even though they've been teammates for like five years, I think. So the Jets are going for it. The Jets players know what time it is. They've also, also, I think there's an element of like these Packers players are like, yeah, it's, we go through this every year with Rodgers. Aaron 12 always comes back. The Jets fans are like, and the Jets players are like, Zach Wilson, help get us out of here, please. So they're doing everything, unapologetically recruiting him. Of course, it doesn't make a bit of difference. It's not like Rogers is going to come out and say, you know, I was going to retire, but then I was reflecting on a tweet from Sauce Gardner that said he'd burn. The no, it's just funny stuff for us. But um, if I was the Packers, 
and I might be willing to, I might be ready to lose the greatest quarterback ever. I might cut him a video. I might say, listen, Aaron, I love you. And I'm going to, I'm going to lay some music over it. It's going to be green day. Hope you had the time of your life. And I'm going to try to get him to stay for one more year. I don't know if they're doing that. I, I have no idea, but listen, the jets flew there 24 hours ago. Almost right. We haven't heard anything yet. Flynn, your native New Yorker kicking in. Do you think like, you think that the jets are going to make this happen? I am starting to feel like maybe yes. I feel like it's the only option left now. Car's gone. Jimmy G isn't coming here, I don't think. So it's either this or something way out there. I wanted to go back. I find it so funny. And you mentioned the Zach Wilson thing. And in the New York Twitter sphere, there's some memes popping up, like Zach Wilson seeing Twitter today. And it's just him on the sidelines in the hoodie. It's just so funny to me that you still got a guy there, but you're out there on social media recruiting a new quarterback or even CJ Uzama was actually, I know from having been around the Jets, brought in to like be Zach Wilson's guy. I actually believe they live, if not on the same street, in the same um, interesting dynamics in the NFL and on social media. And it's only going to get more wild. I know. And and listen, the Zach Wilson thing, if they get Rodgers and Wilson never plays another snap for the Jets, do you know it is? It's literally the worst draft pick of all time. Like, and I hate to focus on that because it's very negative, but like, it makes the, the Jamarcus Russell look like the, the Tom Brady pick. Like, it's the worst ever. And I don't know, maybe he'll catch on somewhere else. But in the meantime, this is another Kyle Brand space when we don't know Aaron Rodgers' uh, status. And um, I would text him myself, but we don't have that kind of relationship. Occasionally, Rodgers and I will text occasionally, but often it's just about like music or Star Wars movies or stuff, which he's very into. I wouldn't text him. So, what are you doing, dude? can't do that for you guys I, I, that would be inappropriate but we'll see if we can get there yeah we will see all right flynn dart time love you see you good job i'm gonna go get a dart you guys know how this work throw a dart to one of these numbers over here whatever number it hits there's a corresponding topic that i don't know that i've not prepared for and i will just ad lib something as i ride the exercise bike today's number is um off the board please hold hold on one and zero count. Let's see if I can drill in a strike like uh, Rick Sutcliffe. Here you go. Yeah, that's a, that's a fifteen. I think the same number I hit yesterday. Fifteen. Go ahead. What you got? All right. Good topic: wedding preference, band or DJ. Well, I would break it down like this. Am I attending the wedding or am I hosting the wedding? (laughs) In other words, might I be, uh, oh, sorry. Might I be responsible for the bill in some way? Um, All right, so got married in 2010 and Brooke and I had a DJ. And um, it was, it's, listen, it's it's a 10th of the price. Depending on the band or the DJ, it could be a 20th, it could be a fifth. For us, it was a 10th of the price, and that was just made up the mind for us. We had a really nice venue and a, like a modest wedding, I think it was like 130 people. But we went to DJ, and I sometimes look back and I'm like, ah, DJ, man, we kind of small timed it. There is something undeniably entertaining and energetic about the live music factor. It's just, it's just awesome. You can't beat it, especially if they. They're one of these wedding bands that just does, you know, man, a hundred weddings a year, 200 weddings a year, and they just know the cool cover songs and they keep their set list modern and they update it and they can play this, something make it sound just like it does on the, the radio. So the live band is definitely a better experience. If I'm attending a wedding, you better believe when I see that live band set up, I'm like, oh, hell yes, pass the crab cakes. The only wedding, God willing, that I, I ever participate in as the groom, um, DJ. It had to. We did DJ. It's, it was just. It was. It was not in any way because it's better. It was just because it's cheaper. It's that simple. If you're hosting the wedding, you're having a wedding. DJ attending. I can't believe you're going to band. That's it, guys. I'm out of here. I'm gonna ride the bike for a while. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with all sorts of conversation about Lamar Jackson, Aaron Rodgers and maybe Steve Ballmer's toilets, which we love. Until then, love you, miss you, exit through the garage, close the door on your way out. Love you, DJs. Mwah!